If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain, pure religion, and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. We all can agree that the scriptures have been altered. Satan has created religion based on the alterations made in the scriptures. The main reason Satan manipulated the scriptures is to get the worship he seek, in addition to keep the righteous in rebellion. Through the alteration made to the scriptures and religion, Satan managed to deceive the whole world. The scriptures said that Satan would deceive the whole world. And the great dragon was cast out, an old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Many people are waiting to see how Satan will deceive the whole world. Israelites and strangers, that scripture is fulfilled. By hiding the Israelites' identity and the worldwide idol worship through religion is how Satan deceived the whole world. Many of us were oblivious to what was happening until the Most High wake whom he choose out of their slumber. With the help of the children of disobedience, religion is practiced all over the world. When the serpent seed traveled the world to enforce their belief upon the people, that was how religion spread across the globe. When the serpent seed traveled the world to enforce their faith upon the people, that is how Satan set up altars for the principality ruling in that region. Principalities are fallen angels ruling in a specific part of this world. For example, Satan will place a principality or a fallen angel that oversee the continent of North America. Just as the Most High has a hierarchy system for his kingdom, Satan imitate the hierarchy system. Satan have high and low ranking demons. Each demon have a specific job. The kingdom of darkness is a well-organized kingdom. Satan cannot be everywhere at the same time. He has his fallen angels under him that rule in different parts of this world. The scripture said we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but with principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. When you understand that we do not fight against flesh and blood, that is when you will become victorious in your spiritual journey. The indigenous people who refuse to accept the new religion the wicked brought to them, the serpent seed destroyed their lives. The Most High would never command his people to go all over the world with the scripture in one hand and a gun in the other to force his creation to worship him. The Most High gave His creation the opportunity to choose. The Most High did not make His creation robots that everyone must have the same belief. He gave us the right to choose and the ability to make our own decisions. Why is it that those who we call leaders are trying to silence the people with a different opinion? The scripture said we battle with spiritual wickedness in high places. Our leaders are in those high places. The scripture is informing us that our leaders are wicked. The synagogue of Satan, that is Satan's kingdom in the flesh, a network that has infiltrated every organization, corporation, religion, and household in this world. The synagogue of Satan are getting their instruction from the idol or principality ruling in that region. The synagogue of Satan is hoping that those of us who have broken free from the deception, if they oppress us, they will get us to comply and take on their wicked mentality. Israelites, always remember, greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. Stand firm. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The kingdom of darkness created all forms of religion. The pagan church is not the only satanic religion organization. 
all other religion are of the kingdom of darkness. Because Christianity is the largest and most popular religion, it is at the forefront. The Most High said what is popular with men is an abomination to him. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. But God knoweth your hearts, for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Recognizing the smallest details in the scriptures can transform your journey. You must have the Holy Spirit to recognize the small insights because they reveal much. If what is popular with men is an abomination with the Most High, Christianity is the most popular faith. Everyone who professes this religion should question this faith. The scriptures reveal what is popular with men is an abomination, yet those who follow this religion cannot see. The reason they cannot see, the God of this world, Satan, has blinded their eyes. The scriptures said there is a broad road that leads to destruction, and many are on that road. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Many strangers subscribe to Israelite channels just to discredit and claim their interpretation of the scripture is the most accurate. The scriptures in the Bible they profess to follow and read reveal they are on the broad road that leads to destruction, yet they cannot make the connection. Without the Holy Spirit, you'll never understand the scriptures. When you combine Christianity with the other religions, the people who follow those faiths are on the broad road that leads to destruction. Remember, Satan is the founding father of of religion. The amount of people who have awakened from Satan's deception are a few in numbers. Israelites gravitate to Christianity because it was passed on to them from the previous generation. Our ancestors who accepted the pagan faith were forced by the serpent seed. The non-Israelites who accepted Christianity, some were forced while most loved the promises Christianity gave them. Due to the perpetual hatred they have against the Israelites, they love the idea of replacing the Israelites. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Non-Israelites will deny the hatred. However, it shows up every day in their behavior towards the Israelites. In addition to the hatred, religion deceived the non-Israelites to believe all the work is done for them. All they have to do is believe. The Messiah that came in his own name have done all the work. The heathens who laid open the book of the scriptures added themselves into the scriptures, altered the scriptures to favor them instead of the people it was intended for. Some people want to know how they did this. The chosen people of the Most High are not Jewish, nor did the Most High call his people Jews. The word Jew was added in the scriptures in 1775. If you have an old 1611 King James Bible, you will not find the word Jew in it. Jacob had 12 sons, and those 12 sons formed the 12 tribes of Israel. Jacob's sons are the head of a tribe. Anyone who descends from the tribe of Benjamin would be an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. I say then. Hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. The Most High separated his creation by bloodline and their family clan name. The family clan name comes from the Father. The Most High changed Jacob's name to Israel. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob. But Israel, for as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. When the Most High changed Jacob's name to Israel, his descendants became known as the Israelites. Jacob's descendants are named after him, just as the descendants of Ishmael are Ishmaelites. If you trace the Israelites' bloodline, it will lead you back to Abraham. If you trace the Ishmaelite bloodline, it will lead you back to Abraham. If you trace the word Jew, where would this name lead you and who is the founding father and their family clan name? Most people mistake the word Jew for the tribe of Judah, which is false. Judah is one tribe. What about the other 11? Some people refer to Abraham as a Jew. The scriptures reveal to us that Abraham is a Hebrew. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew. For he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eshcol and brother of Anair, and these were confederate with Abram. 
Abraham cannot be a Jew since he is the founding father of the chosen people. The Most High made the everlasting covenant with Abraham. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. How can Abraham be a Jew? Judah is the son of Jacob. The Most High referred to himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God said, Moreover, unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath sent me unto you. This is my name for ever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Jacob is referenced last, while Abraham is first. The small details avail much. Pay attention to them. How can the chosen people be Jewish when the Most High changed Jacob's name to Israel? The Most High chose Jacob and his descendants to inherit Abraham's everlasting covenant. Jacob's descendants are Israelites. In the New Testament, they became Jews. Who made this change? The kingdom of darkness with the help of the children of disobedience, the synagogue of Satan. Adding the word Jew into the Bible was an alteration that gave birth to the state of Israel. The impostors who proclaim to be descendants of the Israelites are not who they say they are. Adding the word Jew is one of the many alterations in the Bible that is deceiving the people. The word Gentile is another word the synagogue of Satan used to manipulate the people. The word Gentile is causing confusion. Where there is confusion, the Most High is not there. But God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. The synagogue of Satan used the word Gentile to give non-Israelites and Israelites hope in a savior. The strangers love to refer to the word Gentile to support the grafted in doctrine and to proclaim they have replaced the Israelites. Christianity declare non-Israelites are now spiritual Israel. I will not go deep into the word Gentile because I have several videos explaining the word Gentile and who are the Gentiles. For a brief summary, the word Gentile in today's language mean non-Jewish. Gentile can also mean nations. Anyone including the Israelites can be a Gentile. In the scriptures, the word Gentile has several meanings. The word Gentile has replaced the word heathen in many scriptures. The heathens are the non-Israelites. In the Bible, the synagogue of Satan replaced the Israelites with Gentiles to insert themselves in the scripture. Most of the time when you read the word Gentile in the scriptures, it is referring to the northern kingdom of Israel. Christianity is a religion, the kingdom of darkness created for the non-Israelites. By informing the strangers they have replaced the Israelites, the strangers will bow down to worship Satan. Strangers, how can you be spiritual Israel and acknowledge the Jews as the chosen people at the same time? If you replace the chosen people because you are now spiritual Israel, who are the Jews? The doctrines the pagan church taught you is contradicting itself. The Most High would be a hypocrite if he replaced his chosen people. In addition, break his everlasting covenant he made with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Jacob's descendants, the Israelites. Yah taught his people to forgive. How can the Most High hold unforgiveness in his heart towards his own people? The Most High promised to redeem his people. Christianity changed the Most High's mission by trying to replace the Israelites with the world. Strangers, your religion is not supported in the awakening. The Most High do not support your religion. The Israelite culture is a lifestyle, not a religion. If you want to serve the Elohim of Israel, you have to let go of your idol gods. Everywhere non-Israelites travel, they bring their God with them. Israelites, the heathens have no problem serving multiple gods. When they approach you and wanting to know more about the Most High, Yah will be another idol God they will be adding to the collection of gods they serve. The heathens will not let go of their idols. This is why it is important to examine the strangers to see if they are sincere. The scriptures reveal to us that the children of disobedience are wiser than the children of righteousness. And the Lord commended the unjust to steward because he had done wisely for the children of this world are in that generation wiser than the children of light. It is our responsibility to set an example for the non-Israelites and teach them how to serve the Most High. Instead of us teaching the strangers, we allow the non-Israelites influence us to serve their idols and forsake the Elohim of Israel. 
the Most High would not allow his people to serve him and idols. Yah said there should be no other gods before him. This is why the Most High would exile his people out of his presence when they fall into idolatry. Israelites, you have to learn from King Solomon's downfall. The heathen woman was his downfall. The Most High warned Solomon not to marry the heathen woman because the strange woman would turn his heart away from the Most High. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go in to them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon, clave unto these in love. Today, we have Israelite men doing the same thing, taking these heathen women for wives, and these same women are turning them against their own. Let me remind you that King Solomon is from the tribe of Judah. Judah was taken into captivity all over the world. This present generation of Judah descendants are repeating King Solomon's mistakes. They have not learned their lesson, and they wonder why they are in captivity until this day. When you truly repent, that is when your deliverance will come. The heathen women Solomon took for wives introduced him to idols, which caused Solomon to drift from the Most High. For it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Astrid, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Then did Solomon build an high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Moloch, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense, and sacrificed unto their gods. Although the heathen women married King Solomon and bare his children, they did not let go of their idols but continued to serve their idols. History is repeating itself. The so called strangers proclaim they are serving the Most High, however, in secret, majority of them are serving the idols of their father's house at the same time. The strangers have no problem bringing into the awakening religion the God of their father's house. It is our responsibility, Israelites, to set the strangers straight and guide them on the right path. You cannot allow them to come into the awakening with their idols. You have to let the sincere strangers know of their errors, and if they refuse, have nothing to do with them. The strangers during the time of Solomon's reign caused him to mislead the Israelites and bring forth the Most High's judgment on his people. The Most High divide our nation into two kingdoms due to King Solomon's iniquities. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other gods. But he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. If you are returning to serve the Most High in the Spirit and in the truth, make sure you are serving the Most High wholeheartedly. Many Israelites are focused on the outward appearance. They are not cleaning up the inside. Learning from our ancestors' mistakes will help us succeed in our journey. In addition, not repeat the iniquities of our ancestors. It is time to break the cycle of disobedience. I hope this series on the strangers will help you understand what you need to do. Not all of us were called to teach. There are many important positions in this one body that will accomplish the will of the Most High. Learn your role and work together with the Most High to execute your destiny properly. The sincere strangers will cleave regardless. It is prophesied. Whatever the Most High say must come to pass. His words will not return to him void. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. 
The Most High said his words would not return to him void. If Yah said the strangers shall cleave, they will. Israelites do not force anyone to accept the awakening. If they choose to continue in their religion, leave them alone. If they are truly for the Most High, Yah will wake them up. Religion has been the downfall to humanity. Religion is how Satan is deceiving the whole world. Those who operate in the flesh is being controlled by religion. It is time both the strangers and Israelites depart from religion and allow the Most High to renew their minds. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God.